Okay, finally, we return to the subway problem, and we're going to scrape that data from the MTA turnstile data page, which is this page here. And just for reference, we're going to call this page the front page. And then when we click on one of these links, we're going to call it the second level page or the data pages. Remember that if we click on here, we see this. So up here at the top, we see the column headers. So the first one is CA. I don't know what that means. Unit. I don't really know what that means. I don't really know what this one means. Station. We're going to be interested in. We're going. To, this is the station. It's called 59th Street Station. We're going to try to limit ourselves just to this station. Line name, division, date, which is here, which looks like the 18th. First, first entry here is the 18th of January 2020. The time here is 3 a.m. And this is the. Actually, no, I don't know what that is. The entries are here and that's like a log of how many people have gone into this subway maybe this is since the beginning of the year i don't really know but let's say it's since the beginning of the year and this is how many people have uh, exited this, this subway station maybe since the beginning of the year so if we look at this this one and this one this is how many people have entered since the beginning of the year until 3 a.m. on this date. And this number is until 7 a.m. on the same date. So if we want to know how many people went in between 7 and 3, or 3 and 7, of course, we just take this number and subtract it from this number. We see that the difference is only 9. It means that only 9 people went in in that time frame. And just for reference, let's count. This is the first column the second column, the third column, the fourth column, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth column. So we're going to be interested in, in this column. We're just going to work with this. And this is the tenth column. So in Python, that would mean uh, the index is nine. So we'll refer to that later. So now let's go back and look at the front page or the this page here. What we're going to do is we're going to start out by scraping this page. And of course, when we scrape this page, we don't want this link or this link or this link or this link. I mean, once we get all of what we're going to do is we're going to get all of the links on this page, but then we're not going to want to access all of them. We're only going to want to access this one and this one and this one so that we can get the underlying data in the data pages or the second level pages. So what we're going to do is we're going to first scrape this page and then we're going to scrape this and we're going to do it in what's called a nested loop. So the first loop is going to go through and scrape all and capture all of these links. And then with each link, so within the first loop, which is capturing, get, accessing all of these links, we're going to do something with each page. So you'll see a kind of nested loop in our code. So let's take a look at our code. And uh, I'm viewing it in Notepad++ here. And we are actually going to use a feature of Notepad++ in here. So of course, we see some familiar imports here. So we're using BS4. And we're using something new called time. This is going to be very important uh, because it's going to stop us from getting banned from scraping the site. So it's going to be an important component here of our program. And then we're doing requests. So let's look at the, the next line. So we have import, we have imported requests. And now we're going to use one of the methods of requests, which is the get method. And we are going to act, uh, get the entire page that we just saw the front page. And then we're going to store that in here. Now, if we just let, in fact, let's try and do that right now. So let's open up a new file, put this code in there and run it. Okay, so we ran it and we don't see any results and that's because we didn't ask to see any results. That is here, we didn't uh, say print anything or 
We didn't try and display anything, so we don't see any results yet. However, all that code has run, and so we do have this page variable there. In fact, so I want to see what's in that page variable. Unfortunately, it's not really what I expect because I think that, oh, I just, uh, I just did a request.get and I'm getting the entire page. But actually, if I check the page variable just by itself like this, I'll be sort of disappointed. I'll see that. So this just means that uh, I was able to successfully access the page, but it's not really what I was looking for. So what we really need is page.text. And I think we've seen that before, but let's just check it again. Let's see what's in page.text because what was just in page, remember we call this an instance of the request type. And then we're talking about an, an attribute of that instance. So this is like a, comes from a class. So it has attributes. This is apparently, let's see, one of the attributes. So let's try running that. Okay, so it says it's very big. If I look at it, it's probably going to slow the shell down, but I'm going to do it anyway, and then I'll just delete this, or I'll just exit this shell and redo this again. So anyway, let's just look at it. It says it's very big. Okay, so we can see that it is all now. We can see it's page.txt does have all the HTML in it, although it's not very easy to read it. And we can also uh, recognize that it's a string because it starts out with this quote here. And if I can scroll down to the end without too much trouble. Okay, maybe you can see it now. So you can see it ends with the string. Now, if we go to here and we type print the same thing, it's going to look a little bit better. And that's because we're going to be printing a string, but the print statement or the print, so now you can see it, the print statement will take these and interpret them as new lines. So we act, once we print it, we won't see this slash n, we won't see this slash n, we won't see any of the slash n's, but we will see it interpreted as a new line. So from here to here will be a new line. So let's try that. It's kind of slow, but if I try to double click it, you'll see that it's been into all of those slash n's have been interpreted as new lines. Going back to here now, we're going to take that, which we just observed, and we're going to pass it into the, into the beautiful soup constructor here. And this is going to create a beautiful soup object, which we're going to call soup. We have to tell this beautiful soup constructor that we're feeding it HTML because we could be feeding it something like XML or something else called JSON or various other formatted formats. And so we have to say specifically, this is HTML so it knows what, what it's getting. And we're going to store that in soup. And then next, we're going to try to find all the A tags. Now we could find lots of other tags. And uh, in previous videos, we worked with the TD tag, and I think we might have played with the image tag as well. But here, we want the links. We want to find all the links. Or the, and this is called an anchor tag. So we want to do that. So let's try and do that now. So I'm just going to rerun the code so that I don't have all of this in the shell. I'm just going to add this new line. Okay. So let's run all of this. Okay. Again, we don't see anything, but we, we do have links and we can see what the result is. And one, two things I want to see. I want to see the contents and I want to see what kind of object is it in other words is it like a list or something else so let's see what it is okay so we can see that it's a list it starts with this and it's going to end with the same kind of bracket so it's a it's a list and if it's a list it should be comma separated so we can look at when when the first comma comes up i can see this is probably the first comma and the next comma is probably somewhere uh, here maybe I didn't miss one. So in other words, this is if this is the first comma, then this is the first element of this long list. So 
I don't quite know how long a list it is, but it's probably fairly long. And this is the first element in it. And you can see that it's a link. Now, this is not one of the links that we actually want to scrape. This says skip to main content. And like the next one says accessibility, maybe. So what are those? Well, I don't know where the first one is, but here's accessibility. So I don't want to scrape that, actually. I have collected it. You can see that it's in my list, but I don't really want to scrape it. So when do I want to scrape? I don't want to scrape any of these, which are probably links. And I don't want to scrape this. And I don't want to scrape that. I want to start here. So this is where we actually, we, we've collected all the links, but we only want to scrape from here. So somewhere in here are the links that we actually want to scrape. I think they're here with these dates here, like November 2nd, 2019. So somewhere in here. So we want to try and isolate those. But before we do that, actually, we don't really want all of this stuff. Like, I don't want when I say the first element is here, but what I really, the only part I really want is what's in here or what's in, say, going down to here. Only I only want what's in here. That is, I only want the actual URL. This contains more than just the URL. So let's check that out. So first of all, we said that links is a list. So that means, if it's a list, that means we can do links and access particular elements, like the first element. So I can do this, and that will give me the first element. Let's see what that is. So that's like that. Or if I go maybe to the 36 one, I happen to know that that's going to be one that contains the actual part that we want. So if I check that 36, oh, I spelled it wrong. Okay, so this is another one. But as we said, we only want this part. Now, I think we did something like this before. We did something like this, links 36. And then we did something like this, I believe. I think it was, maybe was it this? Yes. Okay, so that gives me this part, which is not the part that I want. But it does give me that part. So how do we get this part? The way that we do that is this. I think we did this before as well. So that gives me the part that I want. So we are going to want to do something like this to get the part that we want. If we look in this code, you can see that is here. That is what we just talked about. Now, when we look at that, what we just looked at, we will see that it's not a, what's called a complete URL. And so let's check that again. So you can see this is not a complete URL. If I put this into the browser, it's not going to take me to the page that I want to go to. So what I need is this plus this at the beginning. So let me just put those together and show you what I mean. So this will not give me the page that I want. It's not a complete URL. It doesn't have HTTP in at the beginning. And if I prepend this to that, then I will have a complete URL and it will actually be the page or one of the pages that we want to consider. See, let's copy it and put it in the browser. It's actually one of the pages that we actually want to scrape. So you can see that. Whereas if, if I had just kept this part, whatever it was, I think it was just like here, maybe it was just up to there, that wouldn't have given me the, the whole address, so I couldn't have gotten to this page. Okay, let me just get rid of this. It's not part of the code. So anyway, we see that if we do this and we put in 36 for here, we are going to get part of the link, but then we have to concatenate that with this part, and that's going to form the full URL that we're interested in. Okay, now going back to the code up here, we got all of the links and we stored them in here. 
here I'm just going to create an empty list and I'm going to use this list later to store those numbers that I want to collect. Remember, I wanted to collect the entry entry numbers into the subway system. And I think we said that was in index number nine. It was the 10th column of the data. So I'm just going to store that in here. So I'm going to set that up now to, and it's going to store it later. And now I'm going to set the index here to 35. Now, why am I going to do that? Well, remember we said that we don't want to scrape all of the web all of the links we only want to scrape the ones that have the data in them and that actually starts on the 36th page which means index of 35 in a in a python list so but how i want to show you that first so let me go back go back to here and let's look at links and let's get all of them and let's copy that. So I'm just doing this so that I can see where I want to start actually scraping. So I'm going to go to here and copy the whole thing. And I'm going to put, going to put this into Notepad++. It's going to help me somehow. So this is a little bit of uh, kind of cheating because I'm not using Python to get all of the information. So if you wanted to use Python, though, you'd have to get involved with something called regular expressions. Oh, you can learn regular expressions, but we're not going to do it that way here. I want What I want to do is every time there's a comma, which means every new element in our list, which means every new link, unless there's some extra commas, which actually there are, but we're not going to worry about that. So every new link, we're going to replace this with a forward slash n. So here's what I mean. Let me start from the beginning and go to search and find and replace here. And what I want to do is replace each comma with this. And you'll see what that's going to do. But you have to make sure that you've selected this entry here, not the normal way, which is this way. So you have to have that. And then if you just do replace all, and now all the commas have been replaced by new lines. And Notepad++ has interpreted that as a new line. So I can see now all of the links, and they're in order. And from that, we can see that the first one that we want to scrape is actually here. Now, I did I, when I did this uh, find and replace, I guess there was probably a comma after Saturday and a comma after 25. So it split that. But everywhere before that, it didn't do anything like that. So this is actually. This number actually tells me what element this is in the list. So it's the 36th element, or the index equals 35. So that's why I set that i equal to 35, because I don't want to scrape all the previous pages. I want to start from the index 35, which means the 36th line. 